are lucky in life if you can find your passion. I tell those students, you know, you may have to take a job or two. You, know, you, got, you got to eat, but never give up searching for the job that's your passion. Try to find the job that you would have if you were independently rich. That's the job I have. And when you find that job, the job that causes you to be excited every day and forget about the pay, uh, and where you associate with people you love doing what you love, it doesn't get any better than that. My partner Charlie is 89, and we were talking about that this weekend. You know, I'm 82, he's 89. We do what we love every day with people we love, you know, and they seem to like us okay. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it, how can it be any better? And just cost of living does not equate the standard of living. And the standard of living is, you know, achieving what you want to achieve, working with people that you love. And you don't need that much money. Aside, right. I love to ride around in a private flight. I will <laughs> totally acknowledge that. Leave it, <laughs> leaving that out, you know, I basically, you know, leaving out taxes and charity and things like that. I can live on, easily live on $100,000 a year. And, and, it, and I, wouldn't live, I wouldn't live better if I had eight houses, if I had, you know, a 400-foot yacht or anything of the sort. I've, I've been on 400-foot yachts, and I've been in a lot of fancy houses, but I'm in a house that I bought 55 years ago. It's warm in the winter, it's cool in the summer, it has everything I wanted, plus it has all kinds of good memories. You know, right. my, my kids have good thoughts about it. I can't imagine living any better. I paid thirty-one thousand five hundred dollars for it. I could pay thirty-one million for a house, and and it wouldn't it wouldn't do for me what this present house does. The most important thing, uh, aside from the things I've talked about already, is is really who you associate with. You want to associate with people that are better than you are. I mean, basically, you'll go in the direction of the people that you associate with, and and you want to have the right heroes. Uh, you want people if you want to emulate somebody, you better pick very carefully who you want to emulate. And, uh, and when, obviously, you can't pick your parents. Uh, uh, they're going to have an enormous influence on you, but you don't get a choice on that. But you get choices as you go down the line. And you, uh, who, you, uh, who you admire, who you, who, you, who you want to copy, and the most important for most people in terms of that decision is their spouse. It's also important in terms of a partner in business, but the partner in life is is the most important one. You, know, you want to pick a spouse that's, little, that's better than you are. <laughs> and then he or she, and, hope, and you hope they don't f figure it out too fast. <laughs> when you get to my age, you will not measure how well you've done by how much money you've got. I can guarantee you that. You'll, you'll all do fine on money anyway. I mean, uh, you know, think about it. Seven hours a day, you know, you're in a bed. You got exactly the same mattress I've got. If you don't, we'll sell it to you at the furniture market. You know, I mean, so, so that. I mean, we're on a parody. I can't, I can't outdo you. You know, in terms of my sleeping enjoyment, you can, you can match it by by buying this mattress, which will give you a special price on. Just mention my name. Uh, we eat at the same places. You know, we eat at Dairy Queen, particularly if you're in my position because we own it. But, but we eat at McDonald's and Burger King, and and when I leave here, I'll stop by a fast food place on the way. So our eating experiences are the same. We travel the same. I mean, I had a 10-year-old car up till about a year ago, you know, and it just doesn't make any difference to me. They, they, they all work. We live in a place that's warm in the winter and it's cool in the summer, and we watch the Super Bowl on big screen TV. You do it, I do it. You know, we dress more or less the same. I mean, I pay more for my clothes, but they look cheap when I put them on, so we're really on a, <laughs> we're, we're on a parody. Yeah. So, so the money isn't going to be that big a deal. Everybody in this country is going to, you know, that with the intelligence this group has and the energy you have, you're going to do well. So what's the difference? You know, what really counts? Well, I would say that you will measure, health is enormously important and that's a matter of a fair amount of luck. I mean, you know, so I won't, I, won't, I don't want, I'm not shortchanging it, I'm just saying you can't do too much about that. But you will measure your success in life by whether, by how many, and the extent, whether it's the people you want at 70 or whatever the age may be, you'll measure it by how many of them really love you, you know, in the end. I mean, you can't, you know, you, you, you can't buy love. I mean, it, it doesn't work. You can buy sex, you can buy testimonial dinners, you can buy your name on buildings, you can do all kinds of things. But the, you know, the only way you get to be, you know, love is to be lovable. It's kind of irritating, actually. If you've got a lot of money, it'd be more fun to just write out a check for a million dollars. So everybody, you know, from now on loves me. But it doesn't work that way. And in fact, you know, it, it, the only way is to be, is to be lovable. And, and, you know, I've got this friend who, uh, who came out of Auschwitz and had a, at least one member of the family die there. And 
what is it now? It's uh, 60 years later. You know, she still, when she looks at people, it's a Polish Jew, when she looks at people, the question she asks herself in determining who she really trusts as friends, the one question in her mind is, would they hide me? Now, when you get to be 70, if you've got a lot of people that would hide you, you've had a successful life. I know people who have a tremendous amount of money, no one would hide. Their own kids wouldn't hide them. I mean, they, they really wouldn't. I mean, their business associates wouldn't or anybody else. If it really came down to it, you know, they, they don't have anybody's respect. They've got their attention maybe with money or something of the sort, but they, they, nobody loves them. And uh, my friend Tom Murphy at Cap Cities TV, I mean, dozens of people would hide Murph, you know. All kinds of people would, would hide my wife, you know. That uh, Ben Graham, a lot of people would. My, my dad, had, it would have had a number. And then, like I say, that I can I can tell you people that uh, you know everybody may pay homage to them, and the kids may put up with them and hope they don't change their will or something. But the truth is that nobody would hide them. And if you've got a lot of people that would hide you when you get to be 70, uh, you will have had a very successful life.